Hey guys, what is up? Mike here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. So in this video, I want to talk about Webflow um, and digital disruption. Uh, I want to talk about, you know, is Webflow uh, taking over the front end developers role? Is it a threat to the front end developers livelihood? I just saw a thread of some debating going back and forth between a developer and some folks from Webflow. And this is a real thing, right? Um, this is something that we need to talk about. And I'm going to talk about that because I use Webflow. It's a real, it's a great tool in the marketplace. It's emerging. And um, there is some conflict between how they're pushing things out and the front end developer. So I'll talk about that, Webflow in general, and digital disruption. How do and how should we approach digital disruption as it's going to continue to uh, be something that we have to deal with within the marketplace. Every single industry, digital disruption has been going on for the past 20 plus years and will continue to happen month after month, year after year. Digital disruption is basically emerging technologies um, in the digital space because of the internet that comes about that disrupts and changes the way you've been doing business for the last 10, 15 plus 20, 20 years. Okay, things will change over time. It's a real thing. It happens to every industry, medical, education, gaming, uh, music industry, to television, transportation, every real estate, every industry in the world is being disrupted and will continue to be disrupted month after month, year after year. It's a real thing. How should we approach it? We'll talk about that. But with Webflow, um, I follow, I love Webflow. I've been using it four plus years. If you don't know what Webflow is, it's a very professional tool that allows you to build amazing responsive websites and web, at, web, uh, mobile sites, um, you know, without using any code. And it's a very, it's a real thing. It's not this very cook, you know, very, uh, child based application where you drag and drop. No, it's a real professional tool. And I love it. I've been using it four plus years and they're growing. Uh, on my one of my Twitter accounts, I see Webflow everywhere, I guess, because I follow all the guys and um, they just, you know, have their their tweets above. It feel, feels like they're taking over. Every time I open up my Twitter account, they're right there. And I saw this thread between a friend and developer uh, and, and one of the Webflow guys kind of going back and forth. And this is a real thing. And it needs to be talked about. Basically, this, you know, and the sentiment is. If you are, if you have built your livelihood, you made a career, you studied, you've gone to school, you put hard earned money, you've spent hours, you burned the, the midnight or whatever, you, you've spent five plus 20, 10 years or whatever, learning how to, you know, code HTML, CSS, JavaScript and so forth. And you make your living as a friend and developer. If there's a tool that's coming out like Webflow that has coined the phrase, no code, you know, they, they've coined that phrase. So it's a direct impact to somebody that actually loves to code. It's a real direct impact to somebody that made their livelihood off of knowing how to code because knowing how to code is a valuable resource and you're a valuable asset to the marketplace in technology. And that's a real thing. So it's a real discussion. So the question right off the bat, is Webflow taking over the front end developer's role? Not in the short term. It's not, it's not there yet, but the writing is on the wall. There is no secret that five, 10, 15 years from now, you don't think other companies, other technologies are going to come out where you can just how I'm building, able to build a web site, a mobile responsive website. You don't think I could do that and make it a native application, submit this to Apple for review and approval, submit it to Google uh, from an Android you know, native app perspective and, and get approval there. You don't think there's gonna be tools that allow a designer, that allows someone that does didn't spend time how to JavaScript and all that stuff to do that stuff. If you don't think that's coming and you know, then you're, you're mistaking. OK, and this is a hard reality is Webflow taking over your job from now for the next five, 10 years. I, I don't believe so. You still need developer. I've used Webflow last year as a front end, as a front end developer. I was working with an insurance company and we're a small little incubator and we're taking this 
old school insurance company to a digital age. And I was working as a principal UX designer and I was a front end developer using Webflow, working with architects and back end developers. It's not there yet, right? There was clunkiness. I had to export the code and we had to, you have the Webflow framework, you have companies that use their own framework and not everyone's in communication with each other, right? That's going to take some time, years, but the writing's on the wall. The disruption is here and it's coming. Um, so the answer is no, it's not taking over your friend and your role right now, but it is coming. I showed a, uh, last year, uh, there was a intern is going to school in Canada for, you know, um, computer science. And when I showed him what I could do with Webflow, he was like, this is scary. Like, like he's processing this It's it's very early, but it's coming to the point of me being able to design a mobile native app in Webflow, push this out to Apple, uh, and the code all work together. I don't know how it all works. I don't care about the backend iOS stuff, but for this to all work together and become a native app at some point, it's going to come. Companies are going to continue to push forth this effort and you're going to be able to build real web applications with the use of minimal code, being able to code. Like I don't have to create a bracket HTML or with equals quotes, you know, 100% anymore. This is all going to be done in a GUI interface like Webflow. It's going to continue to emerge and come. So that's just a reality. Now, here's the thing here. How do you face digital disruption? This is what I recommend. Never argue, never stick your head in the sand and argue your side because you feel you're right. Seven out of the 10 things that emerge in the marketplace probably will never, never hit. But three out of those 10 will hit. The Zillows of the world will catch on and now everybody uses Zillow and real estate agents have to, to, to kind of pivot and utilize Webflow within their business. The taxi cab companies weren't sure Ubers and the Lyfts were going to take off and now they're disrupted. The blockbusters of the world didn't think streaming media would take forth, but now it's here. It takes time for these things to come about, but they do. My 10 year old, my 13 year old never watches TV. They're on YouTube 90% of the time and Netflix when they can't find, when they want to watch a show, they're on Netflix and Hulu and streaming media and Disney or whatever. My mom still watches Channel 9. She loves Steve Harvey. When she's over, she's watching, you know, um, Family Feud and Judge Judy. And the, Nash, the, the local TV channels are on, Channel 2, Channel 4. My wife still watches news here and there. But when my kids grow up, when these 10 and 13 year olds, these five year olds become 40 years old, are they going to watch Channel 2, local news, Channel 9? No, right? TV will be disrupted at that point. It, it's, it's already being disrupted, but it will change even more. So digital disruption ha happens over and over and over and it will continue to happen. Don't argue your side. What you do is have the conversation, continue to push forth in what you're doing have the conversation on how and why these things are emerging. Try to understand from a different perspective and try to start dipping your toe in that water just to kind of get familiar with it. You don't have to dive deep into it. You don't have to pivot completely, but learn about it. Stay on top of it month after month because when these tools hit, now you are aware of it, knowing how to maybe bring those in to, to work alongside with you and use these tools to work with you rather than have a conflict and be left behind by not wanting to think about it. Hey, I'm stuck with my old way of doing things. I've spent money, my hard earned years working and, and, and learning this. And now I feel cheated because these people or these, um, these uh, professionals now can do this thing without, you know, Hey, self checkout is here. I just left Walmart with, a bag of like $80 worth of consumer goods and I just did my self checkout. So if you made your living at a cashier, 
that's now disrupted, right? It's real and it will continue to happen. So yeah, so don't stick your head in the sand, learn about these things, have these conversations with these other professionals, with these tools and learn to use them. Another easy example is when I, I started my career as a graphic designer and pivoted towards UX design. When I was back in my day, I was loving to do logos and, and create icons. And when I started to see these marketplaces come about where you can just purchase an icon set, there was no need for me to market myself as a, an icon designer or have that skill set because companies could just pay $100, $200, $300 for an icon package rather than pay me a salary to sit there and produce these things. So I had to pivot. And now I utilize these marketplaces for these icons and for these graphics and for whatever, right? So I didn't just hey, I'm going to continue to produce icons. I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to pivot my my efforts and energy into something else. And uh, that took me into the UI, UX design space uh, where I'm solving problems and things like that. And UX design space will continue to emerge and grow and I need to evolve with that. You know, so how are, however things change, you don't have to dive right into that wave like instantly, but just learn about that wave. Don't argue that wave learn about what's going on there and talk, have that conversation. And as you move and as this wave becomes bigger, you can move alongside with it. All right. There's a lot long, longer, you know, we can go on for about an hour and kind of discuss more and more and more about these things. But that's pretty much the sentiment. No, it's not. These disruption doesn't just happen right now. It doesn't happen here and today, but um, it will happen over time and it happen to take years. Uh, some happen sooner than others. Some can happen within months. Some can happen within a few years, but some can happen within five, 10 years or so, you know, things like that. But the writing is on the wall for Webflow or being able to produce applications and, and build stuff without, with minimal code. That's real. That is 100% real. And I think it will continue to emerge and grow in other, I think I see, I foresee futures of more and more companies that are learning to growing into this Webflow model of having a GUI interface building applications where the focus will be probably less on, hey, scripting, but more so on building, solving problems in other ways. Anyway, anyway guys, big conversation, big topic. I'm curious to get your opinion. If you have a topic on this, hit me up in the comments below and leave your thoughts. Um, there. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks for uh, supporting the channel. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. More content coming out. I'm trying to get, you know, been been off doing some other stuff. Definitely want to start posting more content and uh, grow my channel uh, as you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.